Hi, I'm Abdul and welcome to this tutorial from Vonage. This video will cover how to make a call between phones running an iOS application using the Vonage client SDK for iOS and Swift. When placing a call with the SDK, it makes a HTTP call to a URL which has the information needed to handle the call. This is called the answer URL. You will use Node.js and Express to set up your answer URL. To follow along with this video, you will need a Vonage account, Node.js and Xcode installed, as well as the Vonage CLI. When an inbound call is received, Vonage makes a request to a publicly accessible URL of your choice. We call this the answer URL. You need to create a webhook server that is capable of receiving this request and returning an NCCO. An NCCO is a JSON array that you use to control the flow of a call. Create a new project directory and change into it. Inside this directory, initialize a new Node.js project by running npm init-y. Next, install the Node.js dependencies that we need using npm install express local tunnel dash dash save. Create a new file called server.js and open it in your code editor. Start off by defining some constants for use later and setting up express. Next, define a route for the answer URL. This route will return an NCCO with a talk action followed by a connect action. The connect action will connect the iOS app to a user endpoint. The username is in the body of the HTTP call from Vonage to your server. Define the route for the callback events and log the incoming events to the console. Finally, set up local tunnel to allow your local server to be accessible to the internet. Be sure to replace the subdomain constant with a unique string. Return to the terminal and start the server by running node server.js. Now it's time to create a Vonage application. In your project folder, run the apps create command to create application. Name it and specify the event URL and voice answer URL from the webhook server you just created. As you can see, a private key has been generated for you and you have been given an application ID. Keep a note of these as you will need them later. Users are a key concept when working with the Vonage client SDKs. When a user authenticates with a client SDK, the credentials provided identify them as a specific user. Run Vonage apps users create Alice. This will create a user with the username Alice for your application. The client SDK uses JWTs for authentication. The JWT identifies the username, the associated application ID, and the permissions granted to the user. It is signed using your private key to prove that it's a valid token. Run the JWT generate command, which you can also find in the link in the description. It uses the private key, username, and application ID from earlier, along with access control lists or ACLs to generate a JWT for the specified user. This tutorial needs a second user, so create a user called Bob and generate another JWT. Now it's time to create the project. Open Xcode and create a new project. Select iOS for platform, then app for application type. Name your project, select Swift for a language and storyboard for the user interface. Now that your project is created, close it as you need to add the client SDK library via CocoaPods. Open the terminal and change directory into your project folder and run pod in it. This creates a pod file. Open the pod file and add Nextmo client as a dependency. Once done, run pod install. That will download the Nextmo client and add it to your project. Now open the XC workspace. As you will be using the microphone when making a call, you need to request permission to use it. To do so, open the info.ps file which is a file that contains the metadata for your project and add a new entry. From the drop down list, pick privacy, microphone user's description and add a description for its value. Next, open the app.delegate file and import AV foundation. In the did finish launch image options function, request permissions by making a call to AV audio session. Also print out whether it's been granted or not to the terminal to help us debug if needed. If you build and run the project, you will now be asked to grant permission to the microphone. The first screen of the app will be used to log in either user. To do so, create two login buttons and a status label. Set the titles and add them to the view. 
The status label will be used to display the connection status of the client SDK. Leave the text blank for now. Constrain the three views, then you can build and run the app. To make working with two users easier, create a user struct which has the properties for name, JWT, and core partner name. Then create two static properties on the struct, one for Alice and one for Bob, and paste in the JWTs you created earlier. Before you can place a call, the client SDK needs to authenticate to the Vonish service. Import Nexmo client in the view controller file and create a local instance for the client. Also, create a property for the current user and add a did set block on it which will call a login function, as well as a local property for notification center. These will be used later. Add targets to the two buses you created earlier which set the user property. When this is set, it will call the login function. Create the login function, which will authenticate the client using the JWT you created earlier. Also set the delegate of the client to this class too. The delegate provides updates and changes that happen with the client, so you want to listen out for them. Create an extension for the NXM client delegate and implement the did change status function which update the status label depending on the client's connection to the Vonish servers. Another required function on the delegate is the did receive error function. This will also update the status label if there's an error. There is no guarantee that the delegate functions will be called in the main thread, but since they are changing the UI, you call dispatch queue main async to ensure the changes are done in the main thread. If you build and run again, the status label will update to connected. Next, you'll want to build a screen that allows you to place and receive calls. From the Xcode menu, select File, New, File. Choose a Cocoa Touch class, name it Core View Controller with a subclass of UI View Controller and a language of Swift. At the top of the new file, import next to a client. The call interface will have three elements a label to show status updates, a button to start calls, and a button to end calls. Create the elements and add them to the subview, then constrain them. Add two helper functions, set hangup button hidden and set status label text to avoid the repetition of calling dispatch queue main async as changes the state of the UI elements need to be done on the main thread. The set hangup button hidden function toggles the visibility of the hangup button as it only needs to be visible during an active call. Now that the UI is built, you need to present the core view controller from the login screen you built earlier. You will need information about the logged in user to be passed between the two view controllers, so add properties for the user, the client, notification center, and the call, as well as an initializer. In the view did load function, add a back button to the navigation bar and set the title of the view controller. Then, Add the logout function for the back button. Now, if you return to the view controller class, you can present the core view controller when the client connects successfully. Run the project. If you log in with one of the users, you will now see the calling interface. Add an extension for notification name to keep the notification name string constant. You can now add the code needed to receive a call. The NXM client delegate has a function that is called when there is an incoming call. And an implementation for it in the extension in the view controller file. In the call view controller file, add a reserver to listen out for when a call is received. When it does, the did receive call function will be called. Add the target to the hangup button too, which will trigger an end call function. Create the did receive call function, which grabs the call object, then triggers the display incoming call alert function. Add the end call function, which will hang up the call and return the UI to its default state. Create the display incoming call alert function, which will get the name of the person calling. Create a UI alert controller with an action to answer the call or reject it. If the answer action is picked, the call delegate is set, the hangout button is shown and the status label is updated. Note how the local property is set with the incoming call to avoid it being deallocated. The reject action calls the reject function on the incoming call. Similar to the NXM client, NXM call also has a delegate to handle changes. To the end of the core view controller file, add the conformance the NXM call delegate. When there is a change in the status of a member, check if the update is from the other person on the call 
then for the answered case, update the status label. In the completed case, update the UI and set the core property to nil. Also, add the function which checks if there's an error and the move function which is required but you won't be using today. To make a call, add a target to the call button which triggers the make call function. Add the make call function which updates the status label and uses the server call function to make a call to the user's call partner. When this code is run, Vonage will make a call to webhook server you set up earlier and it will connect the two users. Finish the completion handler by checking if there's an error. Otherwise, set the call delegate, update the UI and store the call object. When you build and run again, you now have a working app. Run the app on two different devices or simulators. Log in with the different users and now you can make calls between them. You can view the incoming events on your terminal window. If you have any questions, please leave a comment or email devrel at vonish.com. To learn more about what you can do with the Vonish Client SDK for iOS, visit developer.nextmo.com forward slash client hyphen SDK.